Hi, welcome to the first episode in this series, which is data analysis for complete beginners. So you're going to be able to learn a lot of different real world tasks that a data analyst takes in a daily job or through analysis task. So in this test, we're going to be covering hospital data. So we're going to be analyzing a data set from a clinic. It's real data. So let's get started. So anytime you're faced with analysis, you're trying to solve a problem with data and keep that in mind because you don't want to just be jumping into just analyzing anything. You want to be able to try to solve a very specific problem with your data, which limits your analysis. So our problem statement is that the clinic has gotten several complaints and our task is to analyze, hypothesize, and then create a data story uh, on the overall wait times. So, of course, when you are presented with this problem, you want to ask questions back from management. So why are we getting complaints? And they might say, oh, maybe it's staffing issues. They want to know, are these complaints legitimate? Are we too busy? And is it a certain type of patient? So all of those things we are going to look at. And these are good points for our analysis. Don't just jump into the data and start looking at everything. You will spend days of wasted time doing that. So you want to just keep your analysis focused on answering those questions. So let's see how we get a little bit more focused. So we definitely want to develop insights. And as an analyst or data science, you're going to hear this word a lot. And all it means is to provide some answer to a question. Usually insight kind of elicits that it's going to be kind of a surprise answer. And sometimes it is. But we want to be able to find things that are not easily recognized without data analysis. The way you can kind of always kind of get a structure going when you're looking for insights is to ask WHW questions like what, how much, when, why. We want to know what are the business goals. That is the number one thing that you want to know from anybody. So every business is going to say they want to make money, but in this particular case, we are looking at long wait times, which can be tied to uh, making money or making the business have a good reputation. All of these things we want to know. So definitely ask what the business goals are. Two, what is our metric of success or failure? Find that out immediately. Because wait times is our metric of success and failure for this particular analysis. But if they didn't give you anything, there are many things we could be looking at like revenue, patient count, uh, doctors, staffing. But now when we know that the, the metrics of success for this analysis is success or failure, it makes our analysis very focused. What are the trends, positive or negative? For example, wait times, do they increase or decrease during the day? Days of the week, uh, when wait times increase. And then we want to know how do we fix this problem? Is it staffing? Is it something else? So these are all things we can look at. Next, let's look at the tools that we're going to use for this analysis. So what tools are we going to use for our analysis? Excel. So Excel is going to be probably where you spend 80 to 90% of your time as a data, data analyst when you're doing analysis. So we're going to be creating pivot tables, which are absolutely essential for any type of data analyst because you're going to be aggregating data together and grouping data, which is a very important part of analysis. We're going to be using if conditionals, conditional formatting, so we can see the highs and lows or discrepancies, time conversions. We're going to be creating new dimensions or new columns or new features to our data so we can analyze things because we're only given a certain set of original data features. And some functions we might use is text functions and day of week. And then we are going to create a data story using PowerPoint. So our story is going to have a beginning, a middle, and end. And that's all going to be presented uh, very clearly in PowerPoint. 
So let's jump into our data now that we know what we're looking for. Hi, so here's our data. We have certain columns and features and rows and values in this data set. And we have a date column, medication revenue, lab cost, consultation revenue, the doctor type, financial class, patient type, entry time, post consultation time, the completion time, and then the patient ID. So maybe the first thing you realized is that we don't have our metric of success, which is wait time. And we're gonna calculate our wait time. But before we do that, one thing I, I like to do as a, a data validation or a way to make sure we have the right data is to ensure that we have the right format. So I can just quickly look at this first column where we have dates and it, it seems like some are date time, some have custom values. And the way I'm seeing that is if I highlight a particular cell and I'm on the home tab, and I look at the number type or the data type, we can see that it says date for the first cell. But if I go down and I go to the next type, it is custom. So the first thing I'm gonna do is highlight that whole column, make sure we have the right date. So I'm gonna use short date. And now you can see all those are the same. I'm gonna highlight the next cell and we can see that it's currency. The next cell is currency because this is revenue currency. And these should be general or text. And then when we get to entry time, we also see a custom data type. So I'm going to click that, move down all the way to more data, more number formats. And I can see that the custom is uh, hours, minutes, and seconds. And we're going to uh, be using this a bit. If I do the same, same custom one, same custom one. So let's create our metric of success first. So I'm gonna put wait time. And we can see there's an entry time and a completion time. So I'm going to subtract my completion time from my entry time. And you can see we're given this value. So I'm going to just click this down. But you can see this is still somewhat in a custom format. So I'm going to make sure that we just have our format correct. So I'm going to go to custom. And for this wait time, I'm going to go down to hours and minutes. And now you can see that we've given, been giving something else. So now I want to be able to turn this wait time into minutes. So we, we can convert this by multiplying it by the minutes in a day, which is 1,440. And then I'm going to multiply this time. So once we multiply that, we still need to make sure that we turn this into a number. And you can see now that is a 54. And we also don't really need the decimals, so I'm gonna go on the number and just hit the arrow key. Once I have that, I can highlight the plus sign and just double click and have that number now down. Now we have the wait minutes. Another part of our analysis was day of the week. So we want to be able to have the day of the week. And the way we can do that is use a function called day of the week. So I'm going to go equals. And then I'm going to use day of week function. A weekday function, not day of week. So the weekday function. And we go over to the date column and we click that and I'll show you what we get. We get a two. Now, before we complete that function, let's highlight it, and you can see it has a return type. So if I click the return type, you can see that the default, which is a one, is from Sunday through Saturday. You might wanna do Monday through Sunday, and each one of these will give you a different format. 
So I'm just gonna leave it on default, but I don't want this to, but first let me give it a heading. I'm gonna call this, let's call it day of week. And the way we can get rid of this too and actually have a actual letter or a word, we can wrap this function in a text function. And then I wanna be able to give it a format the format I'm going to give it is DDDD, and that's going to be our format, and I'm going to hit enter. And now you can see that for that two, we have Monday, because our week is starting from Monday to Sunday. So now what I can do is I can click that down, and then I have my days of the week. Let's add one more dimension to our table. We're going to add the hour, the entry hour, which is going to be our cohort, or when that person's came into the clinic. So we're gonna do equals, and then we're gonna use the hours function. We're gonna go over to entry time, click enter, and that will encapsulate and close that function. And now we can just click the plus sign and have hour all the way down. So the next thing we wanna be able to do is group this data. Right now we have 29,000 entries. We want to be able to say, not look at 29,000 entries. We want to be able to take, for example, the day of the week and aggregate that and take those seven rows and bring in all of that data and then sum it or average it so we can do some analysis on that. And that's what a pivot table is going to allow us to do. It's going to allow us to create our X and Y axes, which kind of creates like a box and then we throw our values into that box and we aggregate them by average, count, or, or sum. So let's do that. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna go over and you're gonna hit insert. So hit the insert and then you're gonna see pivot table. Then it's gonna ask you where your table range is. And you can see our range goes from A1 up in the corner all the way down to, it looks like O, 2999, which would encapsulate all of our data. And we want to put that on a new worksheet. So let's click OK. Now you have your pivot table. This is your pivot table report, but it's not just yet built. Here are our pivot table fields or dimensions. We have these four boxes, which allow us to control how we are going to structure that data. So we can create columns similar to the fields that you saw in the raw data, such as day of week or hour. And then we could create our rows, which could be anything we want. These could be hour also or day of week. And then we take our values and fill it. So the first thing they wanted us to understand was what type of customer. Is it a type of customer that is waiting for a long period of time? So. We saw that we had a patient type, and if we bring patient type down from the fields down to the rows, we only get outpatient. So this is not useful for us because all of our patients are outpatient. So we can just pull that off, and then the report becomes blank again. But we do have a financial class, which is a type of insurance that the user is using. So let's click that. And if I click it, automatically it gets thrown into the rows here. And you can see we have one, two, three, four, five different financial classes there or insurance types. Now I would like to know how long each one of those are waiting. So maybe some insurance might be taking longer to process than others. So I'm gonna get my wait minutes and I'm gonna throw that into values. Right now you can see it's a really high number because it's sum, but we wanna take the average. So we can take the aggregation, and this symbol is an aggregation symbol, click the down caret, go to value and field settings, then it can say summarize field by, and then we choose the aggregation. I'm gonna choose average. And now we can get the average minutes. We can format that by highlighting it, going back to home, and then clicking the back button with the decimals. So we can see that Medicare has the highest wait time, and our overall grand average is 44 minutes. So that's pretty high. That's 14 minutes higher. 
That might seem like an insight, but we need to see how big that sample is. So let's click that and let's add another value. We can add our patient ID, which will be counting each one of the individual patients. So I'm going to bring that down to values. And because that's considered text, because it's alphanumeric, and what I mean by that is um, like it has A, B, C, D with a number. So I'm going to drop that, and it's going to be counted. And we can see from the count, there's only 293 Medicare insurance holders as opposed to uh, all of the others which make up the 29,000. So what I can do is say, okay, well, this is not a very significant data point because the sample is way too small. And it might be hard to understand this, so it might be better to turn that into a percentage. So I can highlight that and right click it the same way we did in our pivot table, go to value field settings, and then I pull this window up and I can do show value as. And we can see this blue bar is our grand total. So right now, no calculation is selected, but I want to show value as the grand total, a percent of the grand total. So the number in those rows are going to be divided by that 29,000, which is a grand total. And now you can see that this, even though this has the highest, out of all the average wait times, it's only 1% of our population in our analysis study. So once we have that, this is pretty significant. We can, we can maybe say that this does not affect our overall analysis. And since we have this pivot table, we can do a few things with this pivot table. You can insert a visual, so we can use a pivot chart or a recommended chart. If I pick pivot chart, you can see that if I click this, it will give us the count of the patient and it will give us the average minutes. But you can see that count of the patient is quite small because it's a percentage, so we can't actually see it. It might be better to click this and turn this into a different chart. So if I click this chart and go to design, I can turn it into a pie chart. So I click change type, go to pie chart, and you can see that right now this chart is based on the, the wait time because that's why it's so different. But if I pull if I pull this value up, now it's the count of the patient ID. And we can add labels, and you can actually copy this chart and add it to your other sheets. However, each time you change something on this pivot chart, it will eliminate what you already have. For example, if I decide to pull off something, the pivot will actually change. So I'm going to create another one, and let's call this sheet our pivot. I'm going to create a sheet where I can house my visuals. So I cl cl click the plus sign and click the new tab and I'm going to create visual. And you can definitely just copy and paste this if you're going to keep this pivot. But I don't want to keep making pivots even though I will show you how to do that. Um, I'm just going to copy and paste the data here. And I'm going to go back over to my visual and dump that in. And I'm going to call this my insurance type. So I want these two. So I'm going to insert that, go to recommended chart, and then it will give me this pivot chart. So I can add labels to that. And I want these labels to be a little bit easier seen. So I'm just going to change the background to maybe this color. And I'm going to change the text to white. Now we can format these a little bit more. So I'm going to click those labels, right click, go to format data labels, and I'm going to do a few things here. First, I'm going to add the category name so we can see it. So I am going to highlight this, right click, go to format data labels, and then I'm going to do values from cells. 
And now you're going to see this window pop open. And I want to bring in the minutes. So I'm going to highlight those minutes. And I'm going to click Enter. And then when I go back over to this, you can see that the time is there. But this is not really that great. So I'm going to now format this time so it looks kind of very um, clean and, 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 and understandable. So I'm going to go to my number once I've highlighted my minutes. Then I'm going to click that, go to more number formats. I'm going to go to custom. And then I am going to click the hashtag. And I'm going to click two hashtags so I can have those two number represented. Then I'm going to click the quotations and write min, which represents a minute. And then I'm going to hit enter. Now this looks a little bit better because we can say 58 minute, which is our wait time, and the percentage that is there. So you have a visual that answers the first question, which is, does the patient type affect the wait time? And we can see that it doesn't have a very significant effect. We can change the title to um, count of patient by financial class and wait times. You can make it something more creative. So let's go back over and create another visual that answers another question. If I go back over to the pivot, we have this, but I want to show you how to put another pivot table here so you know how to do this, just in case you want to keep your pivot charts. So I'm going to go back over to data. I'm going to click in into my data, go to insert again, Click pivot table. It says the range, and we want to put this on an existing worksheet. So once we have that selected, we can go back over to our pivot, and then we can take a particular place where we can put this. You don't want to put your pivot here because as you add rows, it will interfere. So you want to make sure it's maybe more horizontal or parallel to that. So you can see I'm saying put it in this location. I'm going to click OK. Now we have another pivot table that we can use. So we can do something else by saying, OK, we have this visual. We can look at day of week and that we want to see if something is different. So I'm going to just quickly go and day of week. I'm going to get the wait time. I'm going to average that by clicking value fields and settings. And then I'm going to get the average. You can turn that into a visual. I want to see the sample size. So let's just take a quick look. I'm going to, we see that the lowest time is Sunday. And everything else is um, pretty within range. If I bring in the patient ID to see the sample size. We can see which day of week has the most patients and the size. So I'm going to do the same thing here and just you can create your pivot chart from here, but it's up to you. I like to just have my visuals all set where I can throw them in PowerPoint and don't have to worry about the pivots changing. So I'm just going to copy that, go over. Now I'm going to create another chart, call this day of week. And then I am going to do a similar thing where you can add the wait times. So we already know how to do this. Insert, you create your chart. And I didn't highlight everything, so let's go back. I highlight day and I highlight the count of patients. And I insert, recommended chart, and there we go. So you can have that recommended chart. You can, of course, add the two labels. So I'm not going to bore you with that, but you already know how to add both labels to that. The same way we did for this, so you can have extra information. So we can see from this, if I add the labels, data labels and then I add the ones from our cells so I'm going to format so
let's take let's zoom out a bit so we can see what we're doing so I'm just gonna drag this over I'm gonna highlight those and format the data labels then I'm gonna go values from cells and then I'm going to highlight all of the minutes bring that in let's zoom back in so we can see that although sun, Sunday it has the lowest amount of, let's go a little bit bigger. Sunday has the lowest amount of customers or patients and it has the lowest wait time. So they are well correlated. And so is the period here where we have 6,982 and we have the highest amount of patients, which the wait time is about five minutes higher, which is understandable. The only thing that really sticks out here is maybe we look at uh, Wednesday. And Wednesday is just a little bit higher um, for some reason. But remember, we're just looking at a sample. So we this might not be significant. So this may not be the most telling that the day of week is that great but maybe what we can do is we can create a heat map that shows us day of week hour and then our values as a good visual so let's do that and then we'll move on to the data store so i'm going to go back over to our pivot and this is not connected to anything any of our visuals so i can say okay i'm going to take off count of patient then I'm going to get day of week and I'm going to bring that over to columns. And then for our rows, I'm going to get hour. So what we'll have now is this visual. We can see that seven doesn't have a lot of significant data. So if I, for example, if I bring in if I bring in, instead of day of week, I bring in the count of patient ID. And just quickly show you. So we can see that the 7 a.m. hour is maybe not needed. So I'm going to eliminate that first row. So we can see 7 here because it's only a small amount of customers. So it cannot be significant. Then we can get a heat map of our customers or our amount of users that are coming in. I'm going to just move these visuals here on top of each other. Then I'm gonna create a table here. So I'm gonna bring that in. And maybe I should have copied that a little bit better. So go back over to our pivot. Now I'm gonna copy, go back over. And then I'm gonna paste. And I just wanna paste the values. So we can tell this is our hour. And we have to be careful not to delete anything. So, so I go to home, go to conditional formatting, go to color scales, and I click the green and white on color scales. We can see a heat map. So we see most people are coming here in this period. So let's go over first in back to our pivot, change our value to average wait minutes. So I'm gonna change that to average. And see if anything sticks out. So I can copy that, come back over to our visual. I'm gonna dump that in here. But I wanna dump only the values. So you're gonna dump in values. Move that over a bit. I'm gonna bring that over here. I'm gonna highlight from Sunday to Saturday here. I'm going to go to conditional formatting. I'm gonna to go to color scales and then I'm gonna to go to white. So nothing really sticks out here. We can see that there are some lower wait times on Friday. Nothing really has is sticking out. The wait times are pretty uniform here with the heat map. 
the highest times I can see that are maybe around lunch. So this visual might not give you the best representation, but we might can use it. Next, let's create one last visual before, and we want to create a combo chart. So here's our pivot. I don't need this anymore. And we have average minutes. I would also want to be able to see the count of our patient type. So I'm going to go to count of patient ID. I'm going to go to insert, and I'm going to change this to a combo chart. So I'm going to go to combo. And you can see right now it doesn't look very good because they are on the same axes. So you can click one of these secondary axes to say when your particular time is. And this will give us a little bit better view. So now we can see we have the bar graph and the line graph. I click OK. Now this will be connected. I'm going to get rid of these buttons by going right clicking and going hide all fields and buttons. I'm going to move this legend up to the top. So I'm going to click in top. Then I'm going to just get rid of the grid lines. And we can evaluate this to say, okay, the one that sticks out is lunch because if I add the data labels here, because these are our wait times, add data labels, and I'm going to have to format these a bit as we've done before. So I'm going to highlight them. And I am going to get rid of all of the decimals. Then I take a look at that. So, and I want to make this a slightly fatter because it'll look a little bit better. So I'm going to highlight all of those, go to right click, format data series, and pull that gap down. And now we can see that the one o'clock hour still has an average wait time, even though we have a low amount of patients. So that might be something we can look at. We might have understaffing there. But uh, where we would actually have to focus our staffing is during this morning rush, which would be the times when we've had the highest wait time. So what we can do just to highlight that is we can go over to our bucket. I'm going to change this to gray. And then I'm going to highlight. And then I'm going to change the color to this blue. So I can say what is happening. So maybe this is where we want to target our increased staffing, which would be from 8 to 10 AM. So now that we're at a point where we are recommending staff, we got to think about what type of staff. And we can kind of discover that through our data. So let's pop over to our data. So we can see that we have these three time periods. So we can kind of estimate how long it's taken for the consultation and how long it's taking to process. So entry time. So let's take up a column and say, we're going to say consultation period. And I am going to use the post consultation time because we know they are ending the consultation, subtracting that from the entry time as our total consultation time because that's. And then what we can do is what we did in the previous section, but let's do that all in one cell. And then we're going to multiply this by 1440. And now we need to make sure this is a number. So we go over to home, go to number. And now we have our time. Let's do the same thing here so we can see how long it's taking to process. I'm going to call this 
our process period. And I am going to take the completion time minus the consultation time, post consultation time. And we are going to encapsulate that in parentheses and then multiply by 1440. Now we also turn this into a number, but we are not going to stop there. I also want the percentage that this is. So I'm going to create two other columns. So I am going to take the consultation percentage, which is just going to be our consultation period divided by the wait minutes, which is a total wait minutes, right? And then we're going to get a 78%. And then what we can do for our other our process percentage is we just subtract this number by one. Oops, one. Actually, we want to subtract one from our cell because that will give us the difference. So what is this all telling us? What this is telling us is, let's make these a little bit period. This is our estimated time for the doctor to be engaged with the patient. Of course, there's a little bit of wait time before the consultation, but we know the more doctors, the less wait. And we can look at the process time. After they've had the consultation, how long is it taking them to get out of the building. And then we want to see, okay, well, here's the percentage that we're using. So now that we've made all of those calculations, we should be able to come here and just click this down. And now we'll have all of those for us to use. So if we go back over it, insert a pivot, I'm going to create a new worksheet just so I have enough room to do everything. Um, now I can take that process period. So we have a consultation period, we have a process period, and we want to get the average percent that we, oops, not the max, we want to take the average. So, and then we want to take the average here. So we change those to averages. And now we can see the overall average and the overall processing period. And let's, while we're at it, let's get the other one. So you can see every time I bring one of these values in and the consultation period above that, and I turn these into an average. So we can see process period is pretty low. So what I want to do first is I want to take these and I want to copy them. And I want to go back over to our visual. I'm going to go get some space here. And then I am going to right click and then I am going to transpose this. And the reason I'm transposing this is I'll show you in one second. This is our uh, time period, I guess. And these are our, we can call these percent oh, time period or values. It really doesn't matter. And we'll call this I values. So I'm going to take just the first two and I'm going to make a pie chart. And of course, I want to add our information here, just as we did before. I want to turn these into a percent so it's easier to see. And I want to also 
add my information to those. So make these a little bit bigger. And then I am going to put a background to them. And I am also going to add the values for these cells. Of course, I want to format them. So let me get rid of the, the zeros. So we can see how many minutes format. Same as before. Then I also want to add the category labels here. So we can add that to our data story. Now what you can do is you can always go back to your pivot. And we can definitely analyze and let's call this pivot two. For example, you could bring in the day of the week. And you can start analyzing whether the day of the week affects the uh, consultation period in the post consultation period. I'll leave that to you guys for your analysis. So last thing we want to do is put this in a data story and all we would be doing is taking those visuals, piping them over, giving them good titles. So for example, we started with the financial class where we can show uh, that there's no real significance there, but we can see that Medicare is the longest, but it's only 1% of the population. So this doesn't factor in and you can split that um, pie chart up just by moving the pieces around once you dump it into PowerPoint. Then I just listed the what days of the week are affected. This is the visual we did before just with a larger call out for the total average of our wait time. Then we did that combo chart, which shows us, hey, we might have a, a busy period and we might need staff in those first three hours. Although we have the most customers and the longest wait time. So there's a good association there for staff. Then we wanted to know what kind of staff. So that was the last chart we did where we had a staff breakdown. We broke up that pivot table, make a little bit more, uh, that pie chart to make it a little bit more dramatic. And we can see that the most amount of time is spent in the consultation time. So we would think about getting medical staff. Then we do a quick summary on our analysis where we know that uh, there may be the possibility of adding a little bit more medical staff during the morning rush period. And other actions would be determined if the finance, it makes financial sense to have additional medical staffing during the morning hours and determine pre and post consultation times are trending positively and negatively. I really hope that helped you kind of get a better understanding on how to analyze data. Please ask any questions, take the homework and um, do some deeper level analysis on those, those segments that we propose which would be the, the pre and post work times. This is just really what you would be doing a lot if you were a data analyst. Don't hesitate to subscribe if you found this valuable. Share it. Uh, I hope you guys like the series. I hope to do one of these one a week. So thank you.